My presentation yesterday was to discuss immunotherapy, particularly using SLIT, which is sublingual immunotherapy, and also SKIT, which is subcutaneous immunotherapy, and how we do it in our practice and some of the challenges that we have. Well, immunotherapy really started in the, in the early 1900s, uh, and, the, and what it is, it's a terrific way of changing the patient's immune system so that they are not as sensitive to allergens. They become tolerate, you know, they can tolerate exposure to an allergen, and it improves their symptoms of allergic disease, such as allergic rhinitis, allergic asthma. It can help prevent uh, new allergies develop. It can be life protecting in patients with bee sting allergies. So it's a very, very uh, helpful therapy. We've used it for a number of years. Recently, there have been some new studies and some new research in using sublingual immunotherapy, which is uh, drops under the tongue or a tablet under the tongue instead of a shot. So typically, we've been using shots for a number of years, and we know they work, very effective. <clears throat> we know the dose. Uh, we know how long we need to treat people. Uh, we've seen them get better with it. The new therapies, the sublingual, of course, the nice thing about that is the patients can do that at home by themselves. So they don't have to come to a doctor's office. Uh, there's a little bit lower risk for severe reactions with the sublingual compared to the uh, subcutaneous. Uh, may not be quite as effective, but it's still very effective in the studies. So I was talking a little bit about some of the challenges that we're facing in allergy as a private practice for subcutaneous, and some of that challenge is, quite frankly, financial. Uh, with the changing healthcare system, we're seeing patients who have high deductible plans, their health plans have changed, some of the costs are now being shifted to patients, so sometimes patients are a little reluctant to, you know, outlay for that type of treatment, because it is more of a disease-modifying treatment, it's not an acute therapy. They don't see a benefit right away, they'll see it after a few years. You know, sometimes it's hard for people to understand that concept when they get a medical treatment. The sublingual uh, immunotherapy, some forms are not even approved yet. The tablet is a pharmacy benefit. Some patients don't have pharmacies that pay. I mean, you know, there's certain challenges with sublingual as well. Part of it is education. You know, you do talk to the patients about benefits versus risk versus whatever, you know, their resources that they may have to use for it. Uh, there are some good studies that have shown that immunotherapy can help reduce your utilization of resources and help reduce the costs, overall costs for patient care. So we have some good documentation, but education I think is a big, big part of it. So we try to educate the patients um, and, and really explain to them the different options. So with immunotherapy, we're using the allergens that the patient's allergic to. So they do understand that we are really building a tolerance to those allergens that they have a sensitivity to. So they do understand we're giving them the same allergen. So we have to be careful about the dose and the possibility of a reaction is real. And I think people do understand that. Patients, you know, with immunotherapy, uh, you know, obviously you know, we do see it with shots sometimes, not, fortunately not that often and usually not as that severe, but we can see that. Uh, in the sublingual, uh, we do know that the higher the dose, the better the results. And patients can get a little itching in their mouth, they get a little swelling sometimes, and, and you can get a local reaction in the mouth with a sublingual uh, immunotherapy. So maybe even up to 20% sometimes can do that in some of the studies. So uh, it does vary and uh, it's, it's something that people can feel and uh, usually it resolves. It's not a big problem, but uh, you know, it, it is a problem. It's been really exciting in allergy. I've been in allergy for a number of years now, um, and you can tell by my gray hair. But I've seen it evolve because we are now understanding the mechanisms of the allergic reaction, of the pathophysiology of the patients. And now we're, begin we're getting tools that can really pinpoint some of these uh, mechanisms. So not just the medication tools, uh, we're getting other immunotherapy tools and really understanding how the immune system works, how these diseases uh, are triggered and how, you know, what we can do to help them. It's very exciting for me as a physician because I think there's some new options to be able to help our patients. The 
The other thing about allergy is that uh, we, as allergists here at the American College of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology, we are trying to help educate our own members to make sure we do best practices, that we give high dose immunotherapy. Uh, immunotherapy, I mean, we're not the only ones in the, in, in the country who are giving immunotherapy. Other kinds of physicians are giving immunotherapy. But, you know, we think, at least we, we from our studies and from talking to our colleagues, we are really advocating doing it correctly, doing the right dose, in the right way, and we want to helpfully help patients understand that, you know, when they go to an allergist, they're going to get the right treatment. You can have patients get allergy shots and they might not even need it. I mean, they might have other kinds of problems. I mean, I've seen patients come in who've gotten shots and, you know, they say, well, I haven't gotten any benefit. Well, you, you know, and you test them and you realize that, you know, you, you shouldn't be getting them, uh, quite frankly. So I think it just varies, uh, maybe underdosed. Some patients may be underdosed. You might need a bigger dose to get them to really have a good clinical response. So there's a lot of different, you know, uh, problems that sometimes we'll see. But uh, if a patient goes to an uh, analogist, you know, who's a fellow in the American College of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology, I think they can be assured that uh, they're going to get good treatment.